All right, YouTube, Trump has fulfilled another campaign promise. Now, uh, like, like always, the proof will be in the pudding. We have to wait to see what the actual effect of this will be. Uh, but he's imposing what has always been a good idea. We should have had this in place long ago. I've got a very pushy cat here. Yeah, you can come up here, kitty. Yeah, that's okay. Okay. But uh, the general practice, the general concept is that you decrease the regulatory burden over a span of time uh, by imposing a rule by which if a bureau wants a new regulation, whatever that happens to be, it has to repeal two regulations uh, in, in its place. That way the overall burden uh, actually drops over time. I don't know what you're doing, Kitty, but I don't like it. <clears throat> and it's always been something that we should have done. What are you, you're sitting on the computer? Okay, well, I guess you can see my cat. Oh, and it's still recording. Oh, it's actually good. Uh, anyway, yeah, the cat decided she wanted to be front and center. Um, through this method, the regulatory burden will drop over time, number one. And, uh, oh, kitty, could, could you not? Here, just a sec. <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, bless you. My goodness. Okay, you stay away from my, uh, you stay away from my keys. Yeah, this video's uh, getting interrupted a little bit, but you know, I don't. She's sitting literally on the keyboard. But uh, this has been a long time coming. This is something I believe Ronald Reagan actually proposed originally. Uh, the basic concept that uh, you would uh, decrease regulations over time. He's specifically targeting this for small businesses. Now, I'd go further. I'd cut some of these regulatory agencies altogether. The DEA doesn't really need to exist. The ATF, uh, you could have a debate over that. Uh, the CIA, certainly, uh, most of its proper roles are already uh, accomplished by the FBI. Same with the NSA. Uh, the Department of Education doesn't actually help our educational attainment. Otherwise, it'd be number one in the world by now, considering how much it costs. So we could do away with that. So there are a lot of uh, regulations and regulatory agencies that eh, really don't need to exist. This is a good first step, though. It's a mild first step, but it is a campaign promise. Another one fulfilled. Um, it is a good idea. I'm, I'm going to assume that probably people who dislike Trump will dislike the idea of less government regulation. I have a, thing, I have a feeling that they're masochists or something along those lines. Uh, but it will work. Uh, it will over time. This will cause some of those bureaus also to cost less. Uh, by decreasing the number of regulations they're actually imposing and enforcing, you don't have to pay them so much. You don't necessarily have to have as many people in those bureaus. Uh, and that could be a very good thing for this country. As far as business, yeah, it'll make our business skyrocket if it's coupled with a proper tax reform. Now, will we actually get that tax reform? Will he get it passed? In some form, I think he will. It won't be completely what he wants. Uh, what he needs to do <clears throat> is uncouple the income tax rate on entrepreneurs from the business tax rate, drop the business tax rate, number two, uh, for anybody under a certain threshold. Probably should just abolish the property tax on first homes. That would be a good idea. Now I've got two cats trying to climb up here. Hi, Merlin. Yeah, <laughs> she didn't like that. But, uh, there are all sorts of things that we can do to solve the fundamental uh, economic problems that we've got in this country. Uh, and this is one of them. This is something Trump promised he'd do. A couple weeks in, he's doing it. I'd say that's pretty good. Uh, I'd say, so far, despite what CNN and some of these outlets want to say, oh, he's obsessed with fulfilling campaign promises, that's kind of the point. We've gotten to that sad stage at which the corporate media and many people in our country would rather a person be elected and not follow through with anything they've said that they plan to do. And now I've got Merlin probably trying to climb up here too. Please don't do that. You're a lot heavier than your sister. You'll you'll hurt the keyboard or something. Yeah, very cute kitty. But uh, yeah, I got a little bit distracted by all the fluffiness over here. But the basic uh, takeaway is, yeah, Trump's fulfilled another campaign promise. I think uh, I think that's number five or six that he's fulfilled already in the first two weeks. That's more than Obama ever fulfilled. You know, over the first four years of his presidency, it's way better than W did. It's way better than any of them really have done. Usually a politician, they're running for office, they say, I'm gonna do A, B, and C. And they start doing A and never complete it, and they never even try to do B or C, essentially. That's what we get generally with politicians. I think it's helpful that the person we've got in office has never actually been a politician before, doesn't really care about 
uh, the sort of posturing of elections, seems ambivalent about how many people support his ideas and is just doing what he thinks is best through executive orders insofar as he can do them. It's like the travel ban, uh, or the immigration ban, rather, from some of these states. Now, it's not a Muslim ban. If it were, it would include places like Saudi Arabia, Indonesia, and so forth. And uh, I, I will point one thing out here that I think nobody seems to have thought this up. Perhaps the reason why Trump has business interests in many countries that are primarily Islamic that haven't been banned is because he sees them as stable enough nations. If they're stable enough to do business with, they're probably stable enough to admit immigrants from. Saudi Arabia would be an aside. Yes, I would have added them to the ban um, because they are the world's foremost state sponsor of terrorism. It's not Iran, it's Saudi Arabia. Iran's the biggest Shia sponsor of terrorism. Saudi Arabia is the main sponsor of majority Islamic uh, Sunni terrorism. Sunni is a lot larger than Shia. Hundreds of millions of people at this point have been killed by this uh, religious faction. Um, Saudi Arabia has been nominally in control of it now for some time, is responsible for a lot of problems in this world. Yes, I absolutely would have added them to the list. I'm not sure why Trump didn't. I don't think it has to do with business interests. I think it has to do more with energy flow, literally oil. I think the idea is to carve the Islamic world up, these oil states, so that we're getting on our side uh, as as a function of softballing them we're getting the more major economies on our side a place like turkey egypt or saudi arabia or something like that pakistan meanwhile offers us very little uh, in return for us sending them a lot of money it's destabilized it's like osama land it's literally where you know osama was hiding out whether or not you believe like the um, the seal team six obama story about killing him or not he, he was in pakistan he wasn't in afghanistan at the time uh budo <laughs> claimed that many years before so i'm glad that he's fulfilling his campaign promises it's really getting the ire up of people who never liked him to begin with but you know they're never going to like him anyway trump's going to focus on independent voters he's going to try to fix the job situation, the economic situation, and pound ISIS, and that will ingratiate him to the silent majority of the population that doesn't care about all this social justice bullshit. When they say, oh, we are now the resistance, no, you're actually not. You lost an election because you ignored the actual resistance, which was Sanders socialism. Not that it could have beaten Trump anyway. He would have fared worse than Clinton <clears throat> in the Rust Belt. But, uh, you lost because your can the candidate you supported was weak, was a single issue, I have a vagina vote for me candidate, that's why you lost. She didn't spend enough time in the Rust Belt, not that it would have uh, been much of a help. The more she was absent, the better her voting uh, appears to have been outside of California. You stacked up the vote, then you whined for weeks. Now you're whining more, but you lost the election. There's no recourse for you. You have to wait and try again next time. Next time, offer people a sane alternative <clears throat> that didn't say back in 2008 that she wanted to uh, go commit genocide. Maybe that's the proper uh, recourse for your electoral laws. Until then, you can just shut the fuck up because it's not going to do any good. Packing into an airport and protesting in an urban area, well, no shit. There are a lot of far leftists in urban areas. I never would have guessed. I thought they were all hayseeds out in the cornfields or something like that. It's not the way the world works. So this is probably, uh, after defeating the TPP and making sure that never comes to light, this is probably his most important executive action. It's more important than renegotiating NAFTA. NAFTA's been around anyway. We could, we could theoretically struggle through the uh, regulatory load that it gives us. This will decrease the load over time, and he's going further. He's going further in the sense of, oh, well, I'm also going to scrape up regulations and get rid of a lot of them anyway to clear the path, especially for small businesses. Now, this is what I spoke about. For somebody like me, this is going to be great. If it's coupled with a uh, uh, reduced tax burden on entrepreneurs, rolled up with small businesses, put on a different level from like mega corporations or something, oh, it's going to be a great four years for me, economically speaking. It's going to be, I'll probably become quite wealthy. That's good. You know, I don't need my tax money going to uh, fund giving weapons to the FSA or any of that crap. I don't care if it's used to help the poor in this country. I don't care if it's used to help veterans in this country. I don't care if it's used to help uh, immigrants in this country. But when it gets sent overseas to go kill people, yeah, that's a little bit of a touchy issue for me. I'm not exactly on board with that. That's about all. Peace out.